Good morning on this fifth Sunday of Easter as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Christ and prompted by our gospel reading today urged to abide in Christ who is the true vine and being sustained by the life force of that vine to bear fruit in the world as befits his disciples. It's a potent symbol of our Christian life stemming from the root which sustains all we being the branches which reach outwards, bearing the fruit that only a vine can achieve, and hopefully bringing joy to our world. Let us begin then as we sing together in our joyful opening Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God 
and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In just a few verses here, St John compresses the major themes of what the Christian Gospel is all about, like a vat full of grape juice evaporated into a concentrated syrup. And just like the branches and tendrils of a vine, his themes are connected and woven together. It's the central message of today's Gospel, employing a vivid image of viticulture. The grapevine, its branches and the fruit you would expect it to yield. And while few of us, if any, may be in the business of growing vines, most of us adults, I guess, know a thing or two about the fermented juice which flows from it. God is the vine. We are its branches. One of the earliest forms of husbandry recorded in the scriptures, and among the gifts to be brought to the temple as an offering of the first fruits. Grapes, arguably the most important fruit, with which the land was blessed. In this 15th chapter, we see St John's whole understanding of the church, his ecclesiology at work, and his use of the repeated I am sayings. This harks back, of course, to the Old Testament times, when those two words indicated that God was present. He is God. It's the story of Isaiah chapter 5, that we hear on Palm Sunday, come back to life, and the prophet speaks of the vineyard and its owner, and God's disappointment that it only yielded wild and useless grapes. St John portrays Jesus as wrapping himself in Israel's national emblem, for the image of a vine had been emblematic for a long time, appearing on the coinage from the first and second revolts of Judea, as well as featuring on the glorious temple edifice. So the vine was as much a part of Judaism's imagery as is the clover to Ireland or the maple leaf to Canada. So, as Jesus calls himself the vine, he could not have identified himself more with and as the new Israel. Perversely, however, in the Old Testament, the symbol of a vine also carried with it the idea of degeneration, a vineyard run wild, a vineyard out of control and yielding nothing much of any worth, as in Isaiah 5. It is as if Jesus is saying, you think that because you belong to the nation of Israel, you are a branch of the true vine of God. But the nation has become degenerate, as your prophets spoke loudly about. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says Jesus, adding a new dimension to the whole idea. Without a living relationship with me, your branch will wither and die. There is a serious note of judgment here in his message. For Jesus knew about vines as most people did in that region, for they grew everywhere. He knew the soil had to be prepared in advance and, without severe pruning, would yield nothing worthwhile. In its early life, the vine is pruned most severely to prevent it bearing fruit, to conserve all its energy. It has two kinds of branches, ones that are fruit-yielding and another kind which are not. And those which do not yield fruit are cut off, again so they don't drain the strength of the whole plant. Further, 
the wood of the vine was rather soft and not fit for useful purpose, banned in fact from being brought as a wood offering to the temple. So the analogy that John uses would have spoken volumes to his audience. He bids his listeners to abide in him. For without him you can do nothing, he says. This indwelling is a rich and deep relational bond which finds an echo in the prayer of humble access. That we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. There is a reciprocal indwelling in all of this between Jesus and the disciples as there should be among his disciples, you and me. To conjure up this interconnectedness, he uses the image of a trailing vine with its branches going out in every direction. It's a perfect illustrative picture, as this photograph shows of the 250-year-old vine at Hampton Court, claimed to be the biggest in the world, and its branches spreading out in all directions. So this passage is all about Christ, Christology, God's grace, and about us as the Church. As we know in St John's Gospel, we read in chapter 3, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There is no condemnation, but the prospect of forgiveness and pardon. In fact, what Jesus says is really very generous. It's not a demand that we produce fruit or face the consequences. The passage does not instruct the disciples by their effort to yield the fruit. It's more graceful than that. He says, He who abides in me, and in whom I abide, bears much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. He does not say, if you produce fruit, you will dwell in me. But if you dwell in me, you will bear fruit. A very different thing. The responsibility then of us all, as we are the branches, is to dwell in the vine, and the vine will take care of the fruit, yielding a harvest of fruits of the Spirit, as we read about in Galatians. Separated though from the vine, separated from Christ, we will wither and die, and be as if fit for nothing but to be destroyed and thrown on the fire like dead wood that is pruned away. So grace and judgment are bound together, and we need to discern where we've got to in our own life, and in what way this message applies to us in our time today. That can be uncomfortable, but nevertheless we should apply it to ourselves, knowing that God does not preach judgment to the despairing, neither mercy to the complacent. But the warning is made, as it is elsewhere in the parable of the fig tree. In short, if we separate ourselves from the vine, we will wither. If you live in me, he says, you will bear fruit. But separated from the vine of God, you will spiritually wither. So in the Gospel passage, St John sees the Church less an institution, but more in terms of a relationship, composed of those who are at, are at one with God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Those who dwell in Christ are indwelt by his Spirit and loved by him, as we in turn should love one another and are all bound together being sustained by the sap that rises from the stem and nourishes each and every branch. This is not a demand, but our Lord extending an offer of invitation. An invitation to us by Christ, who said, I am the vine. So may our response be inspired by knowing that the fruit we show in our lives, emerging from the branches that we ourselves have become, is to be fed and watered by the stem from which we must never be severed, the very vine of God. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We heard in the Gospel reading for this morning the comforting words that Jesus said to his disciples at the last Passover meal. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. We ask that these words will give us hope as we watch and wait and pray for the signs that our world is beginning to emerge from the despair and dangers of the virus pandemic. We now give heartfelt thanks to those who have worked in key positions over the last year, in hospitals, in the emergency services, in research laboratories and in nursing homes, often at risk to their own health and well-being, to bring hope and healing to those in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God and Father, we pray for your church worldwide and for all who minister in it, both ordained clergy who have reacted to the closure of church buildings with creative methods of online worship and those with important pastoral responsibilities during the long months of lockdown. Give them all strength to support the families who have lost much loved relatives and friends or who now carry the responsibility for patients with long term health problems as a result of the coronavirus infection. Together with church leaders, we pray for families who have felt mental strength, stress of months of isolation and inactivity. And we pray for those families in financial difficulty because of the downturn in the national economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God and Creator, we ask you to support and guide leaders across the world as they work together to find a solution to the acute health crisis many countries still face. Look, we looking with compassion on those countries who are battling with rising death rates and offering them vital medical, financial and technical assistance through the crisis. Help their governments to consider their actions and decisions with wisdom and fairness, guided by valuing the importance of life over wealth or social position. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God and Father, we ask for grace for us, for our families and friends, and for all those we value in our daily lives. As we share this special time of communal prayer, we remember the people we know, both here in Merton and across the world, who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, 
or whose lives face great difficulties or decisions. And we ask that you will hold them safely in the care of your love. We pray for the people named on our parish intercession list because of ill health or frailty. And we pray also for those local families who are mourning the death of relatives or friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. May I thank all those who are able to continue with their offerings and planned giving in support of our church and indeed of the work of the church throughout the diocese. Let us pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood.
Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. We are pleased to announce that from next Sunday, the 9th of May, being the sixth Sunday of Easter, we shall resume three Sunday services each week in person in church. Booking seats, social distancing and enhanced hygiene shall all continue and the times of the services are as follows. 8am said Eucharist, 10am sung Eucharist and 6.30pm Evensong. Gladly the choir and occasional singers have resumed also, seated in the choir once again, as we enjoy their singing accompanied by the organ in full voice. Please see all this week's notices on our website, where a children's colouring page can also be found. Many thanks to all who have had a hand in this online provision and all engaged in worship inside the church. Please note our annual parochial church meeting on Monday the 10th of May, which will take place online by Zoom. If you subscribe to our website mailing list, you will receive the necessary booking form and be sent the Zoom login details. We look forward to seeing you then, if not before. So now, let us join in our final Easter hymn. Let us pray. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.